What's up, heroes? My name is Silaclone, and welcome back to Ace Academy. Today, we're going to continue our adventure for the Friday after our exam with Una Bogesha by checking up to see how Yuna is doing this fine day. We haven't seen her in quite some time. I was browsing a list of clubs and classes earlier, and Ace offers a cooking club. I remember Nikki mocking me, saying I should join when she first started her club, but maybe that isn't such a bad idea. The look on her face would be priceless if I offered to cook and it was edible. That's the key word. We offered to cook and it be edible. I'll go check it out. The cooking class is held in the culinary building. Really. I enter a classroom filled with multiple cooking stations already set up with ingredients. It kind of reminds me of a chemistry lab, but with stoves and ovens and not beakers and Bunsen burners and chemicals, and this is definitely a computer lab, not the culinary building. Either way, moving on. In the corner of the room, I spot Yuna and claim the station beside her. That's, wow, we don't often see her hair up. That's a different look. Hey, Yuna. She blinks in surprise. Oh, hey, are you part of the cooking club? No, I'm just dropping in today. Me too. What brings you here? I'd like to make a meal for Nikki. That's really nice of you. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Little snot and better. I hope so. She's a whiz in the kitchen. What about you? What brings you here? Since I quit the SBA, I've got a lot of extra time. So I've been trying out some of the other clubs Ace offers. Question, did you know she quit the SBA? When did you quit the SBA? Dachi was your sponsor. Why? Her voice holds the edge of finality. It's clear she doesn't want to talk about this further. Well, makes sense. We're cooking. Anything catch your interest? A couple, but I'm still weighing my options. Besides, it's fun trying new things. You bring up a good point. The student instructor arrives and everyone breaks away from their conversations to stand at their stations. Welcome, everyone! You are way too enthusiastic for this. He goes into a short message explaining who he is and the rules and structure of the club. Now that that's out of the way, today we will be learning how to make kasutera. If you haven't already done so, please put on your aprons. Do I have to? I slip off my blazer and tie the apron around my waist. First, we will preheat the oven to 160 degrees. And don't forget to line your pan with parchment paper. Easy enough. Isn't that a little low, though? Oh, right. It's in Celsius. For our dry ingredients, we will have one cup and two and a half tablespoons of bread flour and one cup of sugar. Okay. The wet ingredients will have six eggs and That's five a lot of tablespoons eggs. of honey diluted with two and a half tablespoons of water. Okay. I, where does this matter? At least there aren't that many ingredients. As instructed, I measure out the ingredients. Wait, I forgot to preheat the oven. What temperature should it be? Well, we just we just talked about this. 160 degrees. I preheat the oven to 160 degrees. The instructor continues to provide instructions, and I follow as best as I can. Yuna looks like she is hard at work and really intent on mixing whatever she's got in that bowl. While whisking the eggs, my gaze wanders over to Yuna. I mean, why wouldn't it? She careful, she's carefully pouring flour into her measuring cup and leveling it off before dumping it into the bowl. Such a rookie, measuring exactly. Her tongue sticks out slightly as she concentrates. That's adorable. I try to hold back a chuckle when she glances at me. There's a, a smudge of flour on her cheek, and I can't help I can't hold back my smile. What, what is this face? I don't understand what this face is. She matches my grin before turning back to her ingredients. What is that face, though? I refocus on my own station and add the sugar. The only thing left is to add the honey. How much water do I use to dilate the honey or dilute the honey? Well, if, if I remember, it was five tablespoons. And then it would be two and a half because I, I was looking at it and it was half the amount, which I thought was strange. So five, two and a half tablespoons, uh, two and a half tablespoons. I had two and a half tablespoons of water. Once you add the last of your flour, mix the ingredients until combined. 
Be careful not to overmix. Pour the batter into your pan and let it bake for 35 minutes. Okay. As instructed, I add the last of my flour to the mixture and continue to mix it. What counts as overmixing anyway? How do I know if I've mixed just the right amount or too much? Using my wooden spoon, I, I, I poke around to see if there are any flour chunks still left. Nope. I guess that means my batter is ready to go into the oven. I set the timer for 35 minutes. Pay attention, dude. 35 minutes. Now, just to wait and see. That's an interesting little tidbit there. I didn't think anything was going to happen with the recipe, and then all of a sudden they're asking, but I was like, oh, well, now you're asking me stuff that happened a long time ago. Once my timer dings, I carefully remove the cake from the oven. It baked evenly, so some of the side is spilling over the pan. I think it might be a little darker on one side, too. Does that mean it's burned? I guess only one way to find out. I pry it out of the pan and put it on my plate. Some of the edges got stuck to the parchment paper when I removed it, so there are patches of yellow exposed under the darkish brown layer. Yuna carefully sets her cake on her plate. It's a perfect loaf with a golden brown top and light yellow sides. She glances over at my cake and hides her smile with a cough. The instructor begins his taste test in my row at the back of the classroom. He reaches me before Yuna. Hmm. It didn't quite come out the way you expected, did it? But let's see how it tastes. I don't know what happened. He puts a fork full of cake in his mouth. His eyes light up in a smile. This is absolutely delightful. What, 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 what can you say? I'm a whiz in the kitchen. Really? Let me try. No, 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 don't, don't, don't try it. Yuna stands right beside me, staring curiously at my cake, even though it looks like crap. She tries a small piece. Oh, wow. This is so good. Yeah, it, well, uh, at least she's happy with it. I beam. Nikki's going to be so surprised, but you can't really make a meal out of it. We'll see, though. The instructor stops at Yuna Station next. This is the beautiful cake. I can't wait to see how it tastes. I wonder how it tastes. Yuna's face lights up in anticipation as the instructor takes a bite. He pauses, straining to keep his face calm, then gulps heavily. It's either really good or really bad. How is it? Her voice trembles with hope. The instructor's voice is hoarse as he chokes out his next words. Practice makes perfect. What does that mean? What? I'm just as confused. Let me try. I take a bite. How is it? it? It's like if sugar and plaster had a baby together and let it sit out in the sun until every drop of moisture was baked out of it. Now, how do we put that into good words? How do I put this nicely? It doesn't taste how it looks. I wish I could untaste this. Uh, oh, I don't, that's definitely not the option we want to take here. And that's just way too blunt. How do I, how do I put this nicely? That, that seems like the softer way of saying things. Practice makes perfect. Again? Yeah, I know. There's really not a better way of saying this. Can it really be so bad? I don't think, I, I wouldn't take it as it's bad. It just could be better. Yuna grabs her fork and stuffs a piece in her mouth. She grimaces, then sighs deeply. Practice does make perfect. I'm sorry, there really wasn't a good option for it. The instructor moves on to another station while Yuna pouts at her rejected cake. Well, aside from the result of your baking, what did you think of this class? It was fun, but surprisingly challenging. Yeah, cooking really isn't that easy. She glances at her cake again and mutters under her breath. Did I go wrong? I, I don't know. I wish my cake looked like yours. You going to stick with this as your new extracurricular activity? Mm, I don't know. I want to keep checking out other clubs. Not a bad idea. Makes sense. It looks like other students are trying each other's cakes. You want to try some? No, I want to I want to keep eating mine because mine was really good. Sure. Yuna and I walk around the room and try some of the other cakes with varying results. 
Once we tasted them all, we head out. My phone rings unexpectedly. It's Valerie. Hello? I've got a surprise for you. Come to the hangar. I swear if you're standing in front of my gear with nothing but a bow on, I might be intrigued, yet slightly annoyed. What is... She hung up. Of course she hung up. I guess I better go see what's up. Swiped into the hangar. After I swipe into myself into the hangar, I make a beeline for Eagle. Valerie's perched in front of my terminal, but jumps up once she sees me. She moves from the terminal and gestures for me to sit. Voila. Heh. I stare at the scrolling code on the screen. She's got to stop acting like I can read this stuff. What is this? It's a manual documentation. It needs to be cleaned up before it can be fully understood, though. English, Valerie, do you speak it? So, you called me over to show me something that's not complete? <laughs> I love that face, just that tone of character change of just, she is not amused by your shenanigans. Valerie pouts. If you were even a little bit technical, you'd be able to understand this achievement. But I'm not, so give it to me in the layman's terms. Besides, my script is parsing it as we speak. It'll be done in a few minutes. So what, I'm just supposed to sit here and look at you? I, I mean, I'm okay with this, but I really hope Yuna isn't watching. Not Yuna, Mayu. Mayu. Mayu's not watching. We wait patiently for her program to finish running. I watch as she keeps an eye on her script. She's confident in her program, yet keeps glancing at it, exposing the eagerness be beneath her calm demeanor. I can't help but wonder. How did you get into engineering? Girls can't be engineers. That's not what I said. I asked a simple question. How you got into engineering. Not what's a girl doing in engineering. That's not what I said. Valerie laughs. It's like a puzzle. Elaborate. What? Taking things apart and putting it back together. Finding new ways to piece everything together to make it a better product. That's, that's a good way of putting it. It's a fun puzzle. The possibilities are endless. Even if we can't see all the solutions just yet. And gears are pretty much a source of an endless puzzle. And you discovered that by accident? She shrugs and becomes strangely aloof. Things broke around the house a lot. If I didn't fix it, then it would be broken forever. Okay. Why not just buy a new one? It always worked fine once fixed. Why spend that extra money? Bring up a good point. But why did you have to fix it? Why not your parents? Ugh. Oh, dude, why do you at why do you poke buttons like that? Some of those cards shouldn't be played. She frowns in disdain. My mom couldn't be bothered with things like that. If the computer broke, she'd pretend the problem didn't exist until she needed to use it. Then she'd go and buy a new one because she needed to use it immediately. It's sad that there are people like that. Money was always tight and that's why I started trying to fix things. It can save on money. It really can. The first thing I ever properly fixed was my bike. I was 15, and my neighbor at the time was a young woman at university. She helped me fix it, and when she learned I was interested in this stuff, she gave me a bunch of how-to books for my birthday. What a great way to get started. I guess I was lucky that my dad was pretty handy. He taught me how to take care of my things. Valerie grins playfully. Could have fooled me. Eagle's always a little worse for wear by the time he gets to me. Hey, hey. Isn't that right, Eagle? One, don't talk to him that way. Two, he's worse for wear because I run him really hard because he needs to help us succeed and he's okay with it. He's a tough guy. She coos affectionately at my gear. It's not a puppy. A sharp beep interrupts our conversation. Valerie whips back towards the screen. It's done. And what does it say? Valor and I both lean to get a better look at the screen. I turn my head to ask her a question when her hair brushes my cheek. It's soft and smells like flowers. I hadn't realized how close we were until now. Valerie's too focused on the screen to notice. Her slender fingers dance across the keyboard. Oh, this makes a lot of sense. What does? 
What makes a lot of sense? Why your core only activated that one time? The function of the core was set to debug mode with a single run instance. What does that mean? English, please. The overdrive mode was meant to be used for testing purposes, so it was set to only activate once. That is one interesting test. So what does that mean? It means if we can figure out how to change the setting and find out the parameters of activation, you can use the overdrive mode on demand. That's an interesting turn of events. I didn't think that that would be how we entered the overdrive mode. But, I mean, I guess the theories are still developing. Let's see how this plays out. My eyes widen as I consider the possibilities. Are you serious? Yeah. In theory, anyway. Hey, it's a great theory, though. She squints at the code. That's not even the best part. Here are blueprints with algorithms and formulas. So we're already working on it? Fantastic. What do they say? Valerie puts a finger to her lip. Complete, but we might be able to use this and a bit of reverse engineering to fill in the gaps. If we can figure this out, we can understand the details of the core. Hey, that'd be great. Good stuff. If only women came up with, came with the manual too. Can we have it ready for the next match? Well, definitely not this middle one. That's no. Uh, can we have it ready for the next match? That'd be really rushing. So good stuff. Good stuff. You're kind of amazing. She grins, of course. About time you noticed. No, I always knew, just now we're emphasizing it. Why did Dad include this function in my core? And why didn't he tell me? I have so many questions and too few answers. Let's keep this a secret. A secret? Yeah, there's no point in getting the team's hopes up when we don't even know if this will still work. Plus, I don't need anyone snooping around my gear. I look pointedly at Valerie. She smiles innocently. What? That's what brought us together. Are you saying you wish you'd never met me? That's not what I said. Of course not. But one Valerie is more than enough. She smirks. Don't I feel special? Yeah, you should. Valerie gets to work and I watch her for a while. She's working too fast for me to comprehend what she's doing and I don't want to interrupt her groove to explain it to me. After a few minutes, she glances back at me. How about you sit in this chair and I'll watch you work? Eh, probably not. I guess she doesn't like me looking over her shoulder. I don't blame her. I hate that too. I'll give you some space then. She turns back to the terminal. Thanks. I'll let you know once I'm done. I'm sure you will. After saying goodbye, I'll leave her to do her thing. I've still got some time before I head home tonight. What do I feel like doing? We're going to find out what we feel like doing in the next episode. I'm going to end this episode here. Lots of information today. That's been fantastic that we've got such good progress at understanding how to activate that overdrive mode in our core, which could really come in handy in future exams. As always... If you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button or leave a comment down below. If you are new to the channel, unleash your power by hitting the subscribe button down below today as well. And I will see you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the force be with you and have a great rest of your day. Take care.